Hello friends, this is Himanshu. I am an automation tester by profession and uh, recently I was searching on Google about what all automation softwares are available which you can use to do automation of your Windows based applications. And I ended up with one of uh, one of the tools called Venue. And uh, after using that, I thought, why not I create some videos, some uh, some information about this tool, which is actually uh, not available on the internet. I used that tool, and uh, now I wanted to share that information about how to use that tool, what are the capabilities of that tool with you, so that you can also learn that tool and use that for automation. So let's begin. In this course, I'm going to tell you about one of the open source technology which you can use to automate your Windows desktop applications. This is Himanshu and I welcome you all to this exciting journey of Windows desktop application automation. Vinium is an automation framework for Windows applications. It is an open source tool from 2GIS. With learning of Vinium, you can automate any Windows desktop application developed on WPF or WinForms. You can also automate Windows Store applications for Windows Phones and Windows Phone Silverlight applications. Well, with Vinium, there are so many things you can automate, isn't it? But in this course, I am going to discuss only about Vinium for desktop application automation which is sufficient for automating any Windows desktop application. If you already know Selenium then learning Vinium will not take much time and effort because API of Vinium is almost similar to Selenium API. But even if you don't have Selenium knowledge, even then it is okay as I am going to start from the scratch. In this course, I will cover Vinium installation, usage, how to use Vinium remotely and some pros and cons of Vinium. I will also cover Windows input library at certain places and some native library to deal with complex scenarios where Vinium fails to automate. If you have experience in coded UI or UFT, then learning Vinium will be new to you. But if you already know Selenium, then learning Vinium will be very easy for you. The reason is the API of Vinium and Selenium is very similar. Even if you don't have experience with Selenium, even then it is okay as I am going to start everything from the scratch. If you search on internet about automating Windows application, then there are actually a number of tools we can use for such purpose. Some paid, others are free. Other than Vinium, I found out that we can also use SQLy, Wintask, AutoIT and TestTech.White. Probably there can be some more tools. But Vinium has an advantage over and above other tools because writing tests with Vinium and automating the app with it is similar to how Selenium works, which means very little learning curve. Yet another advantage with Vinium is its compatibility with Selenium scripts. For example, if you plan to use AutoIT, then you have to first write your auto IT script in VB script, compile the code to create an exe and then call that exe in your selenium scripts. And if you select SQLy, then you have to first save some images of windows application and perform action on those images with SQLy. In comparison to Vinium, automation with AutoIT and SQLy is very different. But with Vinium, this is not the case. Vinium is implemented on JSON wire protocol that is used by Selenium. I will discuss more on JSON wire protocol in more detail later. But for now, I just wanted to make you aware of that 
writing Vinium code is very easy, clean, comfortable. With it, you can write tests in any programming language that is supported by Selenium. I hope so far you all are aware of main benefit of using Vinium Desktop. When using a new tool or starting learning it, it is very important to understand pros and cons of the tool. So let me tell you the advantages and disadvantages of Vinium Desktop. The first and the main advantage of Vinium Desktop is with Vinium you can automate Windows desktop applications which are built on WinForms or WPF. Almost every application that uses Microsoft Accessibility can be automated with Vinium Desktop. Vinium is compatible with JSON Wire protocol. Vinium has full access to the desktop just like as an end user is performing some operation on the computer. You can write tests in any programming language with Selenium WebDriver supports like C Sharp, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Let us now talk about some disadvantages of Vinium Desktop. Vinium Desktop uses real life mouse and keyboard events. That is, you cannot run more than one session on the same machine or use mouse while tests are running on your computer. It is sometimes difficult to get the text of an element or object that displays some output. And when you try that, you receive an error message saying no text property. The reason is probably that this type of component is defined as an image. So just like Selenium, Vinium can also cannot read the text appearing in the image. I will tell you in coming sessions how to find the type of element you are interacting with with the help of inspect tool. It is very important to understand how Vinium identifies elements on UI. I will tell you all the different properties Vinium supports. So I will also tell you how you can use various elements identification techniques to identify elements and what all properties Vinium supports. I will start with automation of very basic Windows application calculator. Then I will cover few WPF and WinForm desktop applications. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to automate any Windows desktop based application. So before we actually get into taking a look at Vinium Desktop in action here, let's talk a little bit about the architecture. Vinium Desktop can be a little bit confusing. It seems like a magic is going on when you run the test and it is suddenly automating the Windows application and it is not straightforward how it is doing that. At first glance, it might appear that Vinium is actually driving the application directly from your code, but there is actually a little bit more going on here. It is very important to understand what's going on behind the scene when you run your script. This is what we are going to discuss in Vinium Desktop Architecture. So here is a picture of architecture of Vinium Desktop. You can see at the top here. We have got some bindings and these are language level bindings. These bindings are just implementations in various languages that we can use to do our automation. So you can see there is C Sharp, Java, Python and Ruby. So with Vinium, you have a choice to write your code in any language of your preference. Now these bindings communicate across a common API that is Vinium driver API. This API allows us to have some drivers that interpret commands that are sent across the API. So these drivers here at the bottom, you see we have a Vinium desktop driver. So the Vinium driver knows how to use the low level details of Windows application and drive it to do things like clicking button, going to different windows, getting data from the window itself, 
so what's happening here is you are going to write your test let's say using c sharp against that common api and that binding code is going to issue commands to vnm driver on what's called the web driver wire protocol which is basically a rest based web service that is able to interpret those commands vnm driver is just like a little executable that basically listens on a port on your local machine when you run your test and it is waiting for these commands to come in and when these commands comes in it interprets those commands and then automates the windows application and then returns those results back when you are executing your test locally you are not really doing local execution what you are doing is you are basically sending out commands over this web service and then a server that is sitting on your machine is catching them and then performing actions and giving you back the results. It looks like it is just running directly from your code that you are executing. You might not catch that is actually doing all this over a wire. Hi all, this is Himanshu. So before we see Vinium automating a Windows application, let us do the installation of some required tools. Let me first tell you why those tools are really required. With Vinium Desktop, you can automate your Windows application and to do that, you have to provide some information about the elements of your application to Vinium. Vinium does not come with any record and play feature with which you can record your script and play it later. So with Vinium Desktop, you have to explicitly provide all the necessary information which is required by Vinium to automate your application. You have to provide properties of an element on which you want to perform some action. And it is only then Vinium will be able to locate the elements and perform some operation on it. Vinium does not come with any tools which can help you to see the properties of an element and for that you have to install Windows SDK. Well, Windows Software Development Kit or SDK for short has a tool by name Inspect which can show you the properties of an element. Once you see the properties of an element, you have to decide with which property you can used to identify the element uniquely so let us install windows sdk first go to google and search for windows sdk click on that link you just need to download the exe run the exe and there will be couple of screens where you just have to click on next couple of times as it is already installed on my machine i cannot install it again once uh, Windows SDK is installed on your system, you then have to go to C Program Files 86, Windows Kit, then go to folder 10, bin 10.0.15063.0, and then finally in folder x64, and you will find Inspect Tool there. Double click on it and it will launch inspect tool on your screen. So let us now create a new project in Vision Studio. Go to File, New, Select Option Project and create a new test project. Name the project to something more meaningful. Launch Notepad and click on OK. And Visual Studio will create a new test project for you. So once this is done, you have to attach Vinium libraries in your project from NuGet. Let me expand it a little bit. Right click on references, go to manage and you get references. Go to browse, 
and search for Vinium. Here you will see many options but uh, the option in which we are interested is Vinium Elements desktop the second option so let me install it just click on it and click on the arrow next to it now I am installing the latest version click on OK so if you can see in the references uh, there are a couple of references which and you get has added let me show it to you so the, these three libraries has been added in my project. Let me change the name of the method as well to something more meaningful. Let me write it launch notepad and write something. So now you have to create desktop options object. So this object is actually required to pass on the application path. So let me create it. Let me use the IntelliSense of Visual Studio. Here it is. And let me write options dot application path let me show you uh, where is the uh, where is notepad application actually located in your windows go to my computer go to computer c drive in windows then system 32 then notepad just right click on it go to properties Oops, it is not showing up okay let me reopen it uh, okay now I can see go to securities and copy the path of notepad exe so that you can paste it in here okay that's done So let us now create uh, the object of Vinium driver. Vinium driver. Let me call it driver. New Vinium driver. Before that, let me download Vinium driver. Just go to Google and search for Vinium Driver EXE. So this, in the second link, you can get that. Here is the little executable which I was talking about in my previous lecture. Just download it. Open in the folder extract it now copy the path let me copy the path of Vinium driver and paste it in my code Vinium driver requires two parameter in its constructor first parameter is the path of the driver and second is options uh, let me also write options while i am creating vinium driver object so 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 far the code which we have written will launch notepad on our screen let me uh, let me tell you how you can write something on the notepad but before that you have to identify the notepad text area so for that you have to open up uh, inspect element 
I go to our program file 86 then you have to go to Windows gate and then bin this folder then go to x64 search for inspect tool here you can see it on my screen just double click on it and it will open up like this <laughs> open here it is so I'm just clicking on this little arrow and clicking on the text area and let me expand it a little bit okay so here I can uh, see the property class as edit the class of that text area and the notepad is edit so I can use that okay fine I can go to my code and write down driver dot find element by class name it was edit let me write down edit here and let me do send keys like this okay so let me write a hello world okay so now I can execute my code let me save it and compile the project Go to text explorer and you simply need to right click on it and run it okay, i forgot to uh, run the driver so i just double click on vnm driver now it is listening on port 9999 let me run the test again okay that's done you can see hello world on notepad hi all this is Himanshu today we are going to discuss about how Vinium locate an element on the screen understanding of different ways supported by Vinium to locate an element is very important because if you don't know how it locates the element on the screen then you will find many challenges using it you may end up getting exceptions like element not found exception and you don't know what is the reason behind that so I will also discuss about UIA verify and inspect tools which are available in Windows SDK these tools can help you to see the properties of an element and for this you should have Windows SDK installed in your system. If you have not installed it yet then please check out my previous video to install Windows SDK. Once it is installed it will be available in any of these locations depending upon your operating system. But before we jump start and see how UIA Verify and Inspect tool can help us see the properties of an element, let us first understand how Vinim identifies element. Because an element may have many properties, but for automation with Vinium, we just need to deal with only few properties. Remaining properties are not of use. With Vinium, you can find elements with four different ways. As you can see here, you can locate an element with its ID or automation ID. If ID is present for an element, then good chances are there that that ID will be unique and Vinium will be easily able to locate the element. But it is not always the case. A developer may have assigned the same ID to some other element as well. But in most of the cases, with my experience, I have seen that ID is always unique for an element. But if automation ID is not unique then we have other options available. Yet another option is name of the element. Well, better locate an element either by its name or ID as they are the most preferred way to locate the element. Class name is a name given to UI attributes of an element. Well, it is possible that multiple elements can have same UI attribute and have same class name. So, 
If you are locating an element with a class name then be careful. You can use indexing along if you want to use class name. I'll talk more about it later. The last option is the access key. Access key is just like shortcut key of your keyboard. It is similar of that you use your keyboard keys. Let us now jump into the coding section. So in the first two lines I am creating service object and options object and in the third line I am passing on these two objects while creating the Vinium driver object. In service object I am just passing on the information about the location of my Vinium driver exe and in options I am just passing on the information about the application which I want to run. So once that is done I am passing on these options while creating the Vinium driver object along with the implicit fit. Here is my Internet Explorer exe and here is the path of my Vinium driver. Let me now open UIA Verify. So here you can see UIA Verify. You just need to double click on that and it will open up. You just have to make sure that uh, these options are selected. Uh, these options will help you to highlight the element on the screen. Let me adjust it a little bit. So here I, what I wanted to do is that I wanted to click on tools here. So if you can see on the identification section in UIA verify the name of this element is tool. So I can recognize this element by its name. If you remember there are multiple ways uh, basically four ways to select or identify the element. Uh, like automation ID name class name and access key here. I am using name to identify all the elements So uh, Here I am using tools uh, after that. I'm going to click on internet options So again, I'm using name the name of internet option element is internet options. So pretty easy So after that I am going to click on advanced tab. So if you can see in the identification section the name of the element is advanced. So it is again easily identified.
let us now see the actual code so this is the same code which I have just shown you it is uh, all mentioned together so this code will actually uh, do all the operations it will first click on tools then it will click on internet options then it will click on advanced tab then it will click on reset button again it will click on reset button and and finally it will click on close button Hi all, this is Himanshu. Today we are going to discuss about how we name locate an element on the screen. Understanding of different ways supported by Vinium to locate an element is very important because if you don't know how it locates the element on the screen, then you will find many challenges using it. You may end up getting exceptions like element not found exception and you don't know what is the reason behind that. So I will also discuss about UIA verify and inspect tools which are available in Windows SDK. These tools can help you to see the properties of an element and for this you should have Windows SDK installed in your system. If you have not installed it yet then please check out my previous video to install Windows SDK. Once it is installed it will be available in any of these locations depending upon your operating system but before we jump start and see how UIA verify and inspect tool can help us see the properties of an element let us first understand how Vinim identifies element because an element may have many properties but for automation with Vinium we just need to deal with only few properties remaining properties are not of use with Vinium you can find elements with four different ways as you can see here, you can locate an element with its ID or automation ID. If ID is present for an element, then good chances are there that that ID will be unique and Vinium will be easily able to locate the element. But it is not always the case. A developer may have assigned the same ID to some other element as well. But in most of the cases, with my experience, I have seen that ID is always unique for an element but if automation ID is not unique then we have other options available yet another option is name of the element well better locate an element either by its name or ID as they are the most preferred way to locate the element class name is a name given to UI attributes of an element well it is possible that multiple elements can have same UI attribute and have same class name so if you are locating an element with the class name then be careful you can use indexing along if you want to use class name I'll talk more about it later the last option is the access key access key is just like shortcut key of your keyboard it is similar of that you use your keyboard keys let us now jump into the coding section so in the first two lines I am creating service object and options object and in the third line I am passing on these two objects while creating the Vinium driver object in service object I am just passing on the information about the location of my Vinium driver exe and in options I am just passing on the information about the application which I want to run so once that is done I am passing on these options while creating the Vinium driver object along with the implicit fit here is my 
internet explorer exc and here is the path of my vnm driver let me now open uia verify So here you can see UIA verify you just need to double click on that and it will open up you just have to make sure that uh, these options are selected uh, these options will help you to highlight the element on the screen Let me adjust it a little bit. So here I what I wanted to do is that I wanted to click on tools here. So if you can see on the identification section in UIA verify the name of this element is tool so I can recognize this element by its name if you remember there are multiple ways uh, basically four ways to select or identify the element uh, like automation ID name class name and access key here I am using name to identify all the elements so uh, here I'm using tools uh, after that I'm going to click on internet options so again I'm using name the name of internet option element is internet options so pretty easy so after that I'm going to click on advanced tab so if you can see in the identification section the name of the element is advanced so it is again easily identified So let us now see the actual code so this is the same code which I have just shown you it is uh, all mentioned together so this code will actually uh, do all the operations it will first click on tools then it will click on internet options then it will click on advanced tab then it will click on reset button again it will click on reset button and and finally it will click on close button
Have you observed a problem with this code? Well, the problem is this hard wait here. This is actually similar to asking your test to pause for a few seconds and it will resume after that. So this is a problem. You are asking just to wait, not telling what to wait for. Your test should always run with synchronization with your application. Your test should have some smarter way of wait and it should know what to do after that. Something similar like wait for element to appear on the screen then click on it. This explicit wait or thread.sleep can actually slow down your test execution. And seriously, this is not a good way to handle the synchronization of your test with your application. Unfortunately, WebDriver wait is not present in Vinium and it is present in Selenium and with which Selenium can handle synchronization issues. So we have to develop here some solution by our own. The solution is to create a smart wait. So the smart wait should first see whether the element is present on the screen. If it is present, then it should check whether element is enabled or not. If the element is present and enabled as well, then it should click on the element. Simple, isn't it? So here we are going to check whether element is present or not for around 10 seconds. And in most of the cases in Windows application, element appear during this time until and unless you are working on a very slow system. So once that check is passed, we will then check that element is enabled. There is no point clicking on the element if it is not enabled. So if both these checks are passed, then we can click on the element. You can develop your own way to smartly handle the synchronization issues, but let me tell you how I used to handle it. Let us now create a click method which will check that element is present and enable and then click on it. So this is a code of customized click which is divided into two for loops. In click method, I will pass the name of the element I wanted to click. The click method has some code to locate the element and it will click on it. The first for loop will check if the element is present. If element is present, then first for loop will break. Otherwise, it will wait for one second before next attempt to check for element for its presence on the screen. So first loop will actually try to locate the element for 10 seconds at the interval of one second. When it finds the element anytime during 10 seconds, then it will exit the loop. If element is present, then second loop will start for further check. Here in the second loop, element is checked for whether it is enabled or not. In the same way, element is checked for its presence in the first loop. So if the element is enabled, then it will be clicked. Otherwise, code will wait for element to become enabled. So the problem with this code is this thread.sleep in my code which is applied everywhere. Let me run this program and see its performance. Internet options is there but it's taking time to click on it. Now advanced tab is there but again because of thread.sleep it is you know goes in some kind of pause for a few seconds and then click on the buttons. So what, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to copy uh, this all code from this class and move it to a new project and this time I'm going to create a new test project. Let me copy this code. Go to files, new project, so this time I'm selecting a test project and let me name my project to something more meaningful test ie reset click on ok so let me paste the project code first 
so right now IntelliSense uh, will just show you that there are some missing libraries so let me attach the library of Finium element desktop dot elements dot desktop so the latest version is 0.2.0 let me attach it to my project uh, let me now use the intelligence and first of all let me remove all this um, silly thread or sleep from my code Uh, I'm going to remove this as well because implicit where it is not required anymore and attaching the required attaching the required libraries in my source code uh, I have already created a code for click so I'm just going to copy it from here and paste it in my project this is the same code uh, for which we have just discussed let me add the required libraries let me add the required usings in a project now rather than using uh, web driver dot this I'm going to use click here now uh, as I mentioned I just need to provide one parameter that is name of the element so the name of the element in this case is tools I'm going to repeat the same thing for other elements on which I'm clicking So this code is actually not required anymore so let me also remove it so uh, the code looks more nicer now it is you know more readable let me now compile my project So let me compile my project again and run the test. Right click on the test and just like run this test. So it has already clicked on gear icon. Now it is waiting for internal option to get enabled. So do, we don't need to actually worry about uh, whether any element is uh, you know enabled or not because we have already applied a uh, smarter weight now Vinim has found that neighbor and it is quickly performing all the actions okay so it is almost done pretty fast so we we are now doing everything in a smarter way don't we don't need to you know use any hard sleeps thread or sleeps in our code so if you want you can develop your own smart way or you can also use the smart weight I have used Let me tell you how you can take the screenshots when your test is under execution. So uh, what all you need to do is that uh, write Vinium driver dot get screenshot then put a dot again and select save as file. 
so in save as file you have to pass two parameters first is uh, file name along with the path of the file where you want to save the file as well as you have to provide the format in which you want to save the file so let me give the path and the format I'm just writing down screenshot dot jpeg because I wanted to save that in jpeg format and after that I have to provide the actual format in which, in which I wanted to save the screenshot and that format is present in system dot trying dot imaging dot image format and I'm selecting jpeg format that's it now let me compile the code and run the code okay it's done let me close this window and go to the location where I have saved the screenshot And you can find the screenshot here so here it is let me open it so here is a screenshot which Vinium has taken let me close it and delete this screenshot as well because it is of no use for me but you can uh, take the screenshots along uh, when your test is executing so you can verify it later on uh, guys uh, let me cover another topic here that is uh, how you can execute your test on a remote machine by remote machine I mean any other desktop or laptop where you want your test to execute. So sitting on your system you execute a test that and that test will actually run on some other desktop. It will help you do some other work on your local machine so that you don't have to wait for test to complete and uh, it is very helpful when you have large number of test cases and you want to run them on some other machine and carry on with your work on your local machine so what all you have to do in order to run a test on a remote machine is that you have to first log into that remote machine download Vinium driver exe and run that after that, that machine is ready to interpret and execute any incoming request. So the first thing you have to do is go to your remote machine, copy Vinium driver exe somewhere on that machine and then double click on that exe. It will launch Vinium driver service on that machine. So uh, if a service is running on a machine, then others can use it, right? and Vinium driver service runs on port 9999 by default. Uh, find out the IP of uh, that machine. It's very simple. You just need to go to uh, command prompt and write IP config and you will find the IP of that remote machine. So and uh, once you know the IP just keep it with you so uh, because you need it in your test script. So once you start the service on the remote machine you can come back to your local machine and start writing the test script which will execute on the remote machine. This time rather than making an object of Vinium driver you have to create the object of remote web driver because you want to run the test on the remote machine not on your local.
so guys here i am back in my code and uh, i will now show you how you can run your test remotely first of all let me comment out this code because uh, we are going to execute our test on remote machine so uh, let me change the type of uh, this to remote web driver well i don't have uh, any separate machine so i'm going to execute the test on my local machine and considering this machine as a server itself so first thing i need is desired capabilities object now i need desktop options object so let me create that here okay now using the desired capabilities i have to set the application path so if you are uh, running it remotely then make sure that the application path on the remote machine is the same which you are supplying here because you are executing on a remote machine not on your local in my case this is the same so let me just copy it okay now I have to create the instance of remote Finium driver remote web driver sorry okay now I have to provide two parameters here first is the remote address in my case it is the local machine and uh, desired capabilities object which I have created above so the syntax is that you have to write new URI and then provide the path or the URL of your remote machine in my case it is a local host so it is HTTP localhost the port is uh, 9999 because Vinium uh, runs on port 9999 and uh, then here is the path of my desired capability and here is the desired capability okay so far so good now I can actually save the test and compile my code and run the test okay let me rebuild it running the test oops uh, okay so i forgot to uh, start the vinium driver so let me do it here now Here is my Vidium driver and you can see that it is running on port 9999 okay let me run it again oh uh, Vinium is actually doing uh, finding the tools in my visual studio as well it is, I don't know why it is running so fast today <laughs> and let me compile the code again and run it It has uh, executed the script okay let me close it so uh, guys uh, this is an example of how you can uh, remotely execute your test cases I don't have uh, two machines with me uh, right now so I have demonstrated how you can uh, execute your test on a remote machine so if you want to uh, want to execute your test on a remote machine what all you need to do is that uh, rather than writing localhost as you have seen in my case you just need to type in the IP of the remote machine and make sure that uh, Vinium driver exe is running on that machine for that you just need to go to that machine uh, just double click on Vinium driver exe and it will start its service on port 9999 Hi guys, 
uh, well today I am suffering from some cold and uh, really sorry for my bad voice well so let's get started so whatever functionality you want from an automation tool to automate your windows application is available in these three classes and one interface vnim driver iweb element by an action class we have already seen some of these working in the previous videos like uh, how to create vnim driver object I have also covered the ways uh, element can be found, getting the screenshot, etc. Let us discuss a little bit about all these methods now so that uh, you can get an idea that these methods are available and you can use those. If you are from Selenium background, then I believe that you don't need much explanation about these methods as you must be already familiar with these. Okay, let's first talk about uh, Vinim driver class. The first thing you do when you start writing your code is that you create Vinim driver object. This class has many methods which can help you do many things like finding elements, taking screenshots, launching the application, closing it, and many more. Find element finds the first of the element. Yes, the first element which matches the by object the syntax is something like this so if you want to use it then you have to create a by object and pass it to this method well there is an alternative of this and that is find element by name find element by class name find element by id so on and so forth which is more convenient so uh, it's up to you which way you select both will return the web element to you the find elements method finds all the elements on the page by using the by object and returns the read only collection of the element on the page so uh, once you have that collection you can use the collection indexing and get that ele element this is very useful when you want to perform some operation on a list of similar elements like you want to perform some operation on all the rows of a table this class has some other methods which you can use to launch the application, close the application, etc. I have already covered it in previous videos, so I am not going to repeat it again here. Uh, let's talk about uh, iWeb Element Interface. This has methods which you can perform on an element. Like if you want to clear some text from a text box, then you can use clear. If you want to send some text to a uh, input box then you can use send keys if you want to check whether a particular element is present on the screen or not then you can use property displayed some other methods are mentioned here which are self-explanatory well, so I'm not going to you know uh, discuss about it in more detail uh, well let's talk about uh, by class now uh, by class has many methods by which you can find the element on the screen but from windows application perspective not all are of use we can use name id class name tag name you can also press keyboard keys but for that you have to create a object of actions class yes actions class actions class has methods which can help you do some advanced operations like uh, right click drag and drop clicking a keyboard keys etc don't forget to use build.perform if you are creating a sequence of multiple keys like control s to save the file here is an example of that 